what is your primary identity? Think about it. Me, I have problems when someone asks me that. Am I Indonesian first? Am I a Muslim first? Am I a woman first? Sometimes I have no idea, but I believe that no one has one identity. These are things that I think I identify with. I'm a Muslim, I'm an Indonesian, I'm a promoter of democracy, I'm a feminist, but most of all, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, and a very proud auntie. What I hope that you'll take away after listening to me today is a little bit more about me, a little bit about Indonesia and what we're going through right now, and the work that I'm doing. And it all ties in as to why I'm passionate about what the work I'm doing. Me. What defines me the most is my family. Like I said, I'm a daughter, I'm a very proud auntie, and I'm a sister. When I was about four, five years old, I asked my mom, where's daddy? And she said, oh, he's gone off to train. Oh, and I said, okay, because that's what he usually goes. He usually goes to train students because he was a university professor and he used to teach leadership courses. And so, but he never came home. Later on, I found, and, and we went to visit his, you know, his training camp. Only after we were hauled off to the US and I got a little bit older, older did I realize when I visited him, it was actually in prison. The Suharto government did not like my father. He spoke out against the government and he riled up students to protest. So he was seen as an instigator, as a protester, as an activist. I didn't know then that my father was in prison for 14 months. And it made sense to me somehow, sometimes when he, he came home, there'll be a Jeep outside with soldiers. I didn't know. All I knew that we were hauled off to the US, which is why I have an American accent. I grew up in Iowa. When I, when I arrived in Iowa, I was welcomed with a set of grandparents, aunts and uncles, because my dad had lived there already before. And we were welcomed by this warm, Iowan family who are Christian, who I related to because they, they were, you know, they, they were very nice to me. They welcomed us into their house, and I saw the best of human beings being treated as a Muslim, as an Indonesian, and welcomed into this family. So that, I think, is what my dad wanted to teach me. I used to have slumber parties with, with my cousins, with my American cousins, and I asked, Mom, but Dad, they're going to church tomorrow. My dad said, go with them. So that really shaped me. And now, Indonesia. We're a nation of a country of superlatives. We're the largest Muslim population in the world. We're the largest archipelago with 17,000 islands. We have the largest Buddhist temple in the world. So many superlatives. This year marked the 20th year of our democracy. And for 20 years, we enjoyed being the transition to democracy. We were used as labs. We were used as an example of where Islam and democracy worked. But it also came with a price because the more democracy you have, the, vo the more voices are heard. And some people took advantage of that. In 2016, well, in 2014, during the presidential elections, people started using their voice not just for good, but also to, to incite hate. And violent extremists and intolerance rose. I felt something had to be done. I felt this is not the Indonesia I know. The Indonesia I know embraced being the largest Muslim population with the largest Buddhist temple. And, the, and we, were, we were so diverse. We were Indonesia with Pancasila. This was our motto. This was what we believed in. We believed in unity and diversity. I grew up with that diversity. I grew up loving others. I grew up knowing that even if someone was different from me, I need to treat them as equals because that's how I was treated. So I developed a program with some friends called Charita. So this is the story of Charita. Charita in Indonesian actually means story. So Charita is a storytelling platform and it's a way for us to get to pe people to the table, to have dialogue, to start really learning about each other, to start knowing each other more. We, we, had, we, we started not having these conversations. Everyone was online, everyone was on their phones, and having conversations on Facebook. 
Twitter, or all these platforms. We were worried because a lot of people started being divisive, being not talking to each other and also just hating each other. And this was taken advantage by some of the political elites. So we made a conscious decision to, to develop Charita to bring together Indonesian, young Indonesians for this. So we're also cheeky a bit. So Charita, as I said, means story, but we also developed it into an acronym. So it's a, a program on community empowerment for raising inclusivity and trust through technology application. What did we do? Yes, it was technology application, but we brought the kids offline first. We taught them the values of justice. We taught the value of um, trust, the value of love, in, loving others, even if they're different, and empathy. So we taught them storytelling, but not just storytelling for anything, because it's one of the oldest forms of teaching is storytelling. We taught them storytelling with a purpose. So we brought them together and instilled this, and we train now 150 storytellers that have now gone to train over 1,000 other storytellers all across Indonesia in five cities that we did this, and now it's grown to 14 cities, and it's actually now, as of a couple of days ago, gone worldwide. Charita has also gone to the UK, and hopefully, we're going to take it across the world as well. So this is, this is my first batch of Charita, what we call Charita ambassadors, or Duta Charita. And these are the ones, the Indonesians, that I believe will take Indonesia forward. Some of them have never met, some have never even spoken to even another Indonesian that's of a different um, religion. And now they've become communities. And I'm so proud that I can now look at my, my history and say, I did something because I believed in loving others and actually treating others the way you would love to be treated. And for this, I am proud that we will finally maybe as we come into the next election cycle, that we can still be Indonesia. Kita Indonesia, we are Indonesia.